Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful. Did I tell you I hated this show? <laughs> Not specifically. It was implied. Well, I'll tell you. I'll identify it. I'll put up a graphic. Jared, put up a graphic. I hate this show. We'll do it in a second. All right, I'll keep going. Ridge Holland video on destroying... Have it say Brian Alvarez hates NXT. That's what I want the graphic to be. Ridge Holland video on destroying Mr. Chase and putting him in the hospital. Right after I say that, the Ridge Holland cuts the best promo of his career. That's for sure. I thought this was a great promo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you destroy them because they failed, he brought Chase U to prominence, got them a new look, a new classroom. All Duke Hudson did was criticize every move I made. That smug, arrogant asshole. No, Jared, make, put my name, Brian Alvarez, and then underneath it, put hates NXT. Like it's how I'm identified. Thank you. Yeah. Riley the Osborne's no different. They got their tag title match at Heat Wave. I got them their tag title match at Heat Wave. And they told me to stay home. I was in Florida. They were in Toronto. And they failed without me. And I finally became a champion. And it got ripped away by mediocrity. You can the man I fought so hard not to be. My step-by-step -step destruction of Chase U begins next week, and he stomps the trophy to pieces. Yes. Put it at the bottom, Jared, like it's an identifying, like it's, it's, there you go. Yeah, there we go. Yes, I thought this was a fabulous promo by Ridge Holland. Best one he's ever cut in his life. And this was that guy that, yep, there we go. Thank you. Put that on there. I should, I should throw that into the opening video while I'm at it. But anyway, I thought it was the best promo he's ever done, and they have made me really care about Ridge Holland. Yeah. Which, uh... When you go back to how this thing started? Congratulations. Yes, that is an achievement. Yes. Sean Spears' arm is in a sling. He meets the Virgin. You rescued me from Idris and Malik. You smashed Idris Of all the fucking people to identify, they chose these two. Sure. God. I couldn't even call him the Virgin. He put his real name on there. Uh, I want to say thank you. Nobody said that to you in a long time. I thought I was saving you, but you saved me. So the Virgin asks, why does everyone think you're manipulating me? And uh, Shapiro says, it only matters what you believe. And he leaves. And there's that one dude who reads a lot of books. That's literally his gimmick. He reads books. Not identified. I, Do you remember his name? For $1,000. I can tell you what his name is. <laughs> I could not fucking remember his not name. Not a clue. I think it's, it's Dion Sanders or something. <laughs> there was a Dion. I think that might. I think that's him, but I don't remember his last name. Yeah. Lennox. I'm trying to remember because Mike told me at Observer Live. Yeah, I found out because Mike told me at Observer Live, not from watching the actual show. The guy's on. Yeah. All I know is he's a bookworm. He likes to read a lot. He wears glasses, and when he takes them off, you're in trouble. What an amazing gimmick! Wow. You, read you know what really helps a guy's gimmick is having a name. That really is useful on a wrestling show. You know what they should do? He should wrestle next week. He should wrestle like Hank. And it should just say Hank versus. But no name. Because he doesn't have a name. He's not identified. He's just that guy. Hank versus blank. That's what it should be. Did I tell you I hated this show? Which show? This NXT show here. Gotcha. Thank you, Jared. <laughs> have I ever told you Jared's the best producer we've ever had? Yes, he's actually better than Rob. Joe Whatever. Coffee. Oh, God damn it. This fucking match. Put that thing back up for this whole rant, Jared. Joe Coffee versus Javon Evans. So, I knew, okay, Javon has to win this match. Okay? He has to. So, well, you want me to recap what happened? Please. Joe Coffee fucking beat Javon Evans. And I was like, what? Why? Why the fuck are you doing this? So, they signed this rematch here. And I was like, okay, fine. He guy's got to put over Joe Coffey. He's going to get a big fucking win. He's going to, like... No, they go, like, three minutes. Gallus goes to beat up Javon. Cedric Alexander makes a save. And Javon wipes out the heels and then pins the guy. It's like, that's his big win. You had to beat Javon Evans. For that? So they can fuck right off. At least the guy won. But again, Javon Evans, less over than he was three months ago, or however many it was. 
Well, no, three, four, five. Put your number. Whatever the <laughs> fuck. One. Remember, like, showed up, and then, like, everybody loved him, and then he went toe-to-toe with uh, the champion uh, yeah, to the yeah. point where I was arguing that Ely should have just not... They should have waited a week till Ely wasn't champion, and then had Javon beat him. But no, he, he almost beats Ely Dragunov. Then they immediately link him up with Trick Williams. He's doing main events with Trick. The fucking place is going crazy. And then they're like, well... Now let's get this guy over. How are we going to do it? Let's start fucking 50 50 this guy. Let's have him backstage on a fucking box talking to Ren Sinclair, who's unidentified, about a goddamn Heritage Cup trophy, which, by the way, based on this win over Joe Coffey, now he's fighting for the Heritage Cup. Brother, you went from fighting Ilya Dragunov in a championship match and almost winning. Now they've got this guy fighting for the Heritage Cup? After going 50-50 with Joe Coffey and getting fucking saved by Cedric Alexander? For weeks I've had to have people there say, Oh! I don't get it! Ah, fuck off! God! I'm done. Well, we're not done. There's still more show. I'm so mad about that I even care about Lyra and Tatum being all happy. Lyra and Tatum are best friends now. At least they were like normal people. I, um, by NXT standards, I suppose that's true. Uh, Lyra assures Tatum, you got backup now. I'd rather be fighting with you than against you. Let's show these weird, weird girls how weird you really are. So, yes, Wendy and Rosemary versus Lyra and Tatum is going to be an ongoing thing now. Sarah interviews Ava, who says, Trick and Pete need a winner. She's sure to cover up for the... The ref was just doing his job. Yeah, he did his job correctly and great. He did what he was supposed to do. So she books Pete Dunn versus Trick Williams again for next week. Last man standing match. The winner will challenge Ethan Page on the CW debut. We were like 90 minutes into this show. There's like a half hour left. And they trot out Oba Femi and Stax. And that was the first time I thought, what in the fuck is the main event of this show? What's the fucking main event? We already saw Trick and Pete. Now we're seeing the North American champion. Like... What is the main event? There's no way this match goes 30 minutes. No. It didn't. It did not. Oh, but it's a pop-up power think it went bomb three. and pins him and Tony's all despondent. Tony was very disappointed in his young man's performance here. There's still like 20 minutes left in the show. Yeah. I'm thinking, what could possibly be left? Well, you know what's left, Brian? A segment with four unidentified uh, people uh, backstage. Anonymous blonde women. Well, I haven't got to that part yet. Well, that's where we are. They're marking out for Julia and talking about Malik and Idris. I think that's later. What, what do you have next? After Obafemi and Channing Saxon. I wrote, time. well, I don't know, because I wrote, we had a segment backstage with four unidentified people. <laughs> yeah, I think it's this one. Okay. Because I know later there was a segment with 13 women, and they identified nobody. That's later. Okay. Yeah. This is this is two women. Okay. Two anonymous blondes uh, talking about Malik and Idris, marking out for Julia. Adonis arrives. He calls one of them Brinley. So okay, that was. We, we had least. one name used. I thought he did that in the segment with thirteen women. Okay, that's later. No, there's no. That's later. Huh. I don't have to tell you, dude. One of our notes is just wrong, and I'm confident in mine. Well, I'm sure it's mine because I didn't identify any. But I say what happened because I was so fucking pissed off at this point because okay. this show sucks. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. You have a commute. Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, 
Full access to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.